it's something that you must have in mind so you don't feel betrayed or deceived when you learn that your rosé is a colored white wine. What is up guys, bonjour, this is Julian the French winemaking guy who makes wine videos here on YouTube, yes wine videos, and I'm back today with a new episode of my three and a half minute wine school, I sort of launched this concept of short educational yet digestible videos about wine, but Julian's wine school videos tend to be a little bit longer than this because I always try to bring in and pack in more information and value for you and it does take time. But today I want to keep it really tight and short and briefly talk because it's summer about a simple aspect of wine which is how rosé is made. We'll discuss how rosé is usually made from red grapes and whether or not it can be made from mixing red and white grapes and I'll also make another video showing you how you can create rosé yourself but we'll talk about this at the end of the video let's go three and a half minutes of Julian's wine school video or so I think it's going to take about like five minutes or so but hey it's really hard to bring in real value in three minutes let's get right into it Yes, let's get to the point of it. Rosé wine, in most cases, is made using 100% red grapes. But how? As you probably know, the juice of a berry, the inside of it, what we call the pulp, is white. No red color in it, even in a red grape. You can see that and experience it for yourself. If you simply split a grape berry, you will see that the inside of it is white. Yes, green, as some may argue. To make red wine, the pulp, the juice, this white juice, is fermented together with the skins, which gives red wines a lot of color and also tannins that are also in the skins. Now for rosé, the skins are soaked just a little bit into the juice so as to just get a little bit of coloring into it, a light pink color. Often this coloring just happens as you press the grapes inside the press itself, the skins release a little bit of color into the juice and you get this rosé wine. If you want a more intense pink, rosé, you can just let those skins soak in the press for just a little bit longer, just say a few hours and then press and extract a darker pink, pink juice. That's how you get a darker rosé. Very simple. From there the rosé juice is fermented just like to make a white wine. It's just that it's got some little red pigments into the white wine if you wish. Is that clear? Let me know in the comments. Now is it possible to make rosé using white grapes? The simple answer is yes and no. In Europe, it is forbidden by law to use this plus this to create that. Blending those two together in Europe is not gonna be big no-no. And that's because European regulations when it comes to winemaking are very strict and they don't like winemakers to mess around with that sort of things, blending different appellations and colors. They don't want this because it could result potentially in frauds or at least misleading consumers. So it protects consumers for this. So from Europe, you don't get rosé made mixing red and white grapes with one notable exception and that's rosé champagne, which as you know is usually very commonly made blending Chardonnay with Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier, but that's a different type of rosé. It's a sparkling rosé, not a rosé per se. Now in the rest of the world, because generally winemakers want to do things well as well and not confuse consumers, a lot of rosés are made just like in Europe with red grapes. But it is allowed to make using red and white grapes to make rosé. In the US for example it is allowed. So some usually cheap rosés or blush wines are going to be made this way. The only way to know really is to look up the blend from the winery if they make it available and it's often not the case for cheap rosés and check if there's any white grapes in there. And I'll finish by saying that it's not necessarily a bad thing to have some white grapes in a rosé if it is a deliberate choice from the winemaker to add a little touch of something in a blend, a dash of grassy Sauvignon Blanc for example, or if it's a deliberate style that they're looking for. If they and you enjoy it, why not? 
that's not necessarily bad, but it's something that you must have in mind so you don't feel betrayed or deceived when you learn that your rosé is a colored white wine blending the two. It does exist and I actually made a video to illustrate exactly this, how you can transform a white wine with a dash of a red wine and transform it into a rosé. So if that's of your interest go and watch this right now. It's kind of the continuation of this video. I also made a video a little while ago in Provence in France where I show how rosé is made over there. There you can also go and watch. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share this video to support if you think anybody that you know is going to be interested and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. See you soon with that other video by the way. Cheers, enjoy, bye bye, santé, au revoir.